Hey, it's Mr. Matthews here, and welcome to another edition of Math is Still Math. Today we're going to be introducing the Pythagorean Theorem. You 8th graders need to know this. It's also going to be called the Distance Formula. It is used to calculate the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Some of that might have sounded confusing. Let's break it down. So here is an image of the theorem being explained. You've got a right triangle with sides A, B, and C. It's very important you understand that the longest side of this right triangle, side C, that's the hypotenuse always. The A and the B, if you mix those up, it's not a big deal, but the C has to be the long side. It's also a cross from the right angle, as you can see in this picture below. All these uh, sh shaded areas on the outside of the triangle are all squares, and it just so happens they always end up in the same proportion. It's just a mathematical discovery. So if you take the side length A and square it, and the side length B and square it, and the side length C and square it, it turns out that the A square and the B square always have the same area as the C square. It's just how it works. Let's look at the formula. So the hypotenuse, that's that big fancy word for the long side that is across from the 90 degree angle. And then A and B are the adjacent sides. That means next, that's a fancy, adjacent is a fancy word for next to, like a neighbor. So A and B are neighbors of the 90 degree angle. C squared, that's the square made from the side length of the hypotenuse, is always going to have the same area as A squared plus B squared. It just always works out. So here we have two problems. Uh, we're gonna have to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve them. So let's start with, they're not numbered. So I'm just gonna call this one number one. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna label my sides with a certain letter. So I'm gonna say, this is A, this is B, and then the hypotenuse, the long side is always letter C. The hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle, okay? So then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write down the formula. A squared plus C squ B squared will always equal C squared. Now I'm going to replace or substitute in the values for the letters that I do know. So I know what A and B are. So A is 45, so that'd be 45 squared plus 28 squared is gonna equal C squared. Okay, now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't know what 45 times 45 is, just off the top of my head. And by the way, that is what this means. 45 to the second power means one times 45 times 45. So that's 2,025. Plus, and then again, I don't know what 28 times 28 times one is, so. Okay. So 784. And just because I'm like that, I gotta double check. So 45 times 45. It's definitely that, and then 28 times 28. Okay, check. Let me move this out of the way. All right, so now let's go ahead and add these up. So 2025 plus 784 equals 2,809. Double checking 2025 plus 784. I always double check, it doesn't take any time. Okay, so I'm sure about that. Last step. 
this number, this 2,809, is equal to C, whatever value it is, squared. So to figure out what C is equal to, I'm going to have to take the root, the square root, the second root of both sides. Here's how I draw that on my scrap work. Okay, the square root of c squared is just c. The root of the second root of c squared is just c. The square root of 2,809, however, that is something I'm not gonna be doing in my head. So let's see if I can get this right in the first try. Okay, so with this type of calculator, I'm going to type in 2,809, and there's probably a button for square root. I see to the third power, third root. Ha, I think it's this one. Let's see what happens. Yep, the square root of 2,809 is 53. What does that mean? That means if I multiply 53 times itself, I will get 2,809, and I can test that. What's 53 times 53? There it is. That proves it. So, the missing side length of this triangle is 53. Let's try the next one. Okay, we'll just call this problem number two. It has two side lengths where one is 15 and one is 20. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label this as side A and this is side B, which makes side C the hypotenuse across the right angle. And now I'm going to write down the formula for the Pythagorean theorem, which is A squared plus B squared equals C squared just always works out. Now I'm going to replace the values that I do know. Well, A is 20, so that'd be 20 squared plus B is 15, that'd be 15 squared. So 20 squared plus 15 squared will come out to be C squared. I have to do these exponents first. I can't just do 35 squared. That does That is not how they work. So I'm almost positive I know what this is going to be, but my brain is nervous. It always is. When I have a calculator, I seem to want to trust it. Okay, my brain said 400. The calculator says 400. It's 400. 15 times 15 is 225. And I don't know what C is yet. Let's go ahead and add them up. So that would be 625. Prove it. Okay, so 625 is equal to c to the second power. Now here's the tricky part. To get it down to c, I'm gonna need to take the root, the square root, the second root of both sides. Well, the square root of c squared is just c. The square root of 625, I'm gonna take 625, I'm gonna hit my square root button comes out to be 25, and I can prove that. If I just do 25 times 25, yeah. Yeah, right there, it comes out to be 625, so I'm sure that's right. Let's do another one where they actually give us the hypotenuse and they don't give us one of the other side lengths. Okay, here, now we're looking at number three, and number three is a little different. It's a right triangle, they gave us two sides, but they didn't give us the same size they had the previous two problems. So let's write down our formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Let's label our size, this will be A, this is B, and this is C. And now let's go ahead and replace the values that we do know. Uh, we don't know what A is, that'd be A squared plus, and B squared, that'd be nine squared. And then C squared would be 41 squared. Now 9 squared, that I can trust myself. So 
So I'm gonna have a squared plus 81 equals, now I do not know what 41 times 41 is. 1,681. Now, we have to do some cancel some canceling math, some undo math. We gotta balance this equation. So to both sides, I'm gonna subtract 81. And I'm gonna end up with a squared equals 1,600. Because this minus 81 is 1,600. Last step, I've got a squared equals 1600, which means if I can just take the root, the square root, the second root of both sides, I'll be done, because the square root of a squared is just a, and the root of 1600, 1600 is 40. And I can prove that because if I do 40 times 40, I will get 1,600. So there it is. So the missing side length for A is 40. Now on the next problem, I'm going to make a mistake on purpose, and I want you to see if you can find out what I do wrong. Let's get into it. All right, well, here we are. Problem number four. I'm going to make a mistake while I'm solving this one. And you guys, I want you to try and see what I do wrong. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to call this equal to A, this is equal to B, this is equal to C. I'm going to say A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That means that 77 squared plus B squared equals 85 squared. So I'm going to subtract 77 squared from both sides. And get B squared equals. Let's see. 85 minus 77 equals 8 squared. So square root of both. B equals. Wait, 8 squared is equal to 64. So the square root of 64. Ah, it's just 8. Hmm? Now here's the question. What'd I do wrong? Pause the video now before I show you. See if you can figure it out. Okay, here's where I done messed up. This little maneuver right here. Mm, you can't you can't subtract squares like that. You just can't. It will it'll never balance out. I'm sorry, it just doesn't work that way. We gotta we gotta do a little more work. Okay, so I did set up the problem correctly. I did set up the problem correctly, however, when I had 77 squared plus b squared equals 85 squared, uh, what I should have had gone ahead and done is actually calculated these out. So 77 times 77 is 5,929, and then 85 squared is going to be a lot. 7,225 
Now I'm going to take away 5,929 from both sides. So all I'll end up with is b squared equals number. So let's see, what's 7,225 minus 5,929, 1,296. Uh, and then I'll take the square root of both. You get b equals 36. Well, if you spotted it, good for you. And if you didn't, it's okay. Do you have any comments? Leave them below. If you have any questions? Leave me, uh, you know, leave that as well. If you have another way to solve this, amazing. But the Pythagorean theorem is something that we use a lot in life. Whether it comes down to measuring distances for, you know, planks of wood or distance or really anything. It's a well-established need in mathematics. I've been Mr. Matthews. I hope this has been helpful. Remember, math is still math.